Hey guys, last week I posted a video about some of my favorite seed companies and today I'm talking about some of the varieties I am most excited to plant this year. So let's dive right in. Okay, let's see. I am going to go, I have these all sorted. If you're curious about how I'm laying my garden out this year, we have 12 garden beds that we just put in and we're putting wood chips around them. So we're gonna use the garden beds for my most of our like root crops and things because what we found last year is our soil is very compact um, and so by this year i'm pretty much going to raise everything above the ground either we're doing raised beds or we're going to do raised like rows we're just going to do mounds on top of the soil we have now and same with the vine field like pumpkins watermelons we're going to try just mounding this year because it really didn't do very well last year just placed directly in the ground even though i mixed in compost and stuff so we're gonna be putting soil and compost on top. Okay, some that I'm really excited about are these two. These are small personal size melons and they are from MI Gardener. Do not ask me to pronounce Sharon, Charente, Charente, is that even close? I don't know if that's what these are, but I did wanna try the smaller, more personal size melons. Uh, so this one is Nor de Carme. I did not take French, I took Spanish. So feel free to correct me if I'm pronouncing that wrong. And then Delice de la Table. De la Table. See, I should probably be able to pronounce that. I would say. Delice de la Table. But they look really, really good. I'm really excited to try these. I've heard they're so sweet that you can smell them even just like when you're walking up to the plants. So that's fun. And then we have some other standard melons, uh, cantaloupe, watermelon, one variety of watermelon I think is really cool just from like a genetic, how does this even happen? But moon and stars, I've heard it's pretty good tasting and it always has one big spot and then a bunch of little spots, but only one big spot. And it, I need, everyone looks different. So that's pretty cool. I think that'll be fun. Got some pie pumpkins, sugar pie and winter luxury. Okay, this one should be fun. Masque de Maroc. Uh, it says a French squash prized for its heritage and flavor. Not a pretty looking squash by any means, but don't let the outer skin deter you from enjoying the creamy, nearly stringless, meaty interior. So one of the things that I am really interested in is squash because I love the idea of being able to grow something that you don't have to prep for preservation. You just pick it and put it in storage. When we grew butternut squash a few years back we they lasted the entire winter and we didn't even do anything we didn't know anything about storing squash so i love the idea of stocking up on squash and i'm going to try a few different kinds obviously i have the butternut squash i think this year we got butterbush um and then acorn squash so those are kind of your standard but this one just looked so funky and supposedly has really good storage qualities one thing I've heard, I don't know if it's true or not, but I've heard that kind of the thicker skinned squashes, it helps protect the inside more. So they tend to keep better and longer through the winter. So I'll report back and tell you if that was our experience. Squash, kale, that's all pretty standard. Uh, oh, this year is the first year that I'm growing onions. So actually that's not true. I've grown onions before, but not correctly. I always got onion starts, and apparently you don't want to get onion starts because you don't know what variety you're getting, and it kind of throws the little onion off the whole, the plant, it doesn't really know what's going on, so they can be pretty stunted. So this year I am gonna be starting with onion seeds, and I did get, I think I got four different varieties, but I have at least three here, a red, a yellow, and a white. So. Um, onions, it's really important to make sure you get the right variety because you either are going to want long day, inter intermediate day, or short day. And I believe here we want the long day onions. So made sure you get the right ones of those this year. Got a lot of fun carrots. I've heard really fun things about the atomic red carrot. It says, did you know that red carrots have been around longer than orange carrots? Fun fact. So I'm really excited about that because since we're raising all our plants above the soil this year, I think they'll do much better than they did last year. I'm definitely growing some seeds that I saved from last year. We got a ton of peppers. I mean, that's the fun part about having cheap seeds, especially like if they're reliable, who cares? I love that they're cheap. I don't know. Like, the idea of you get what you pay for, I don't believe that. I don't believe it anymore. I don't believe that because something is more expensive, it is going to be a better product. I think sometimes better products are more expensive and 
sometimes they're more expensive because you're paying for marketing and it's not necessarily a better product. So the thing that I love about these totally affordable seed packets is I was able to get a bunch of peppers. This one's cool. It's a poblano pepper and this one needs to dry on the vine. Interesting. It says the depth of this variety is prune-like and smoky, making it a unique experience. If this needs to dry on the vine, I might need to get a different poblano pepper that I can have for fresh things. I'll look into that more. Um, here's one, the Wisconsin SMR Pickling Cucumber. I'm really excited about because it's got the name Wisconsin in it, so hopefully it'll work for us. But if you have a pickling cucumber you really like, please leave it in the comments because I don't. All my cucumbers are kind of hard to keep up with in my experience. So I'm going to try the Wisconsin SMR. If you've tried this, please let me know how, what you think of it. They look really small. So if you have a bigger one that you like, let me know because we do like the spears. I mean, I'm really excited about all these to be honest, but this video could go on way too long if I went into everything. Okay, one more, two more, two more. Is that okay? Uh, Aunt Molly's ground cherry. I'm sure you guys have heard from other vloggers that ground cherries are a lot of fun. We've never grown them successfully, so I'm excited to try. And then also tomatillo. This year I'm focusing on two things for food preservation, salsa and, oh, pickles, that's boring. Anyway, I, I just wanna get more into pickling this year. I haven't done that enough in the past, but uh, I'm really excited for these green, tomatillos because I want to make salsa verde. So hopefully that's, hopefully I got the right things back. So right now I'm in the garden planning process. I've been, we've been laying it out both outside and on paper. So please let me know if you'd be interested in seeing kind of like a how we're planning our garden. We have like various drafts we go through and then kind of refine them along the way. So if you're interested in that, let me know. I would love to make a video about that. And I just love this time of year. I love planning the garden and I love getting ready. I think this year I might actually be ready for the first time in a long time. Even though it feels crazy to be building garden beds and putting out chips in December, I'm hoping that that means that we'll be ahead of the game this year. My goal is by the time spring comes, I don't want the rush, rush, rush. I want literally, I want the garden beds filled. I want them built, which they're already built. I want the weed barrier down, which we have chips down, everything. By the time it comes to plant, I just wanna be putting them in the ground. It's too much every year to try and do that as soon as the weather's warming up. We've literally been out there doing chips and garden beds in the rain and the freezing cold and it's okay. We're, we keep saying it builds character. But I would rather do it in the crummy weather so that when the weather is beautiful, I'm getting to do the fun stuff, which is actually putting the plants in the ground and just kind of fine tuning the drip irrigation system and getting to watch it grow. Thanks for watching today. Please leave any questions you have, but otherwise we'll see you next time.